Hey, what is going on, everyone? This is Keo Dykin. I'm back again with a very important Raspberry Pi update. So what do you guys know about EEPROMs? Hope you guys have been enjoying Venom. I have my Venom image up in front of me. And in addition to that, I also have a USB flash drive. This is the flash drive that I originally created Pistol Air on. And in today's video, we are going to talk about EEPROM updates and the problems that they are causing for the community. All that more coming up right after this. So several months ago, I believe the first Raspberry Pi 4 EEPROM updated started somewhere around the time frame where the Pi 4 8 gigabyte model first released. And uh, with the number of EEPROM updates, they've allowed us to now use flash drives and other various drives for our Raspberry Pi device and get faster speeds, faster transfers, and better optimizations with front ends. Now, the problem they've been causing with the community is uh, with the number of EEPROMs that have slowly been coming up or coming out, it's been really hard to help other individuals troubleshoot what's going on with their RetroPie image or their build. So um, several months ago, uh, obviously the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, some of the devs thought that, well, a lot of people actually thought that the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte model was just a memory upgrade. Everybody said, oh, it's the same thing. It's just more, more RAM, more memory for your Raspberry Pi. And so when I first got the Raspberry Pi 4 a gigabyte model, one of the devs sent me a updated copy of one of the Supreme images and come to find out it wouldn't boot. And one of those reasons is obviously the Raspberry Pi 4 8 is different because it has a different architecture but in addition to that, a lot of people thought that, oh, I could start using my current RetroPie image on the 8 gigabyte model, or I could use it on something else. Well, I think it was back in July, maybe August of last year, um, I was talking to members of the Supreme team. They sent me some new betas to test out and everything. And apparently, um, one of the other uh, images or front ends wouldn't load. I was like, wait a minute, I've, ha I've had it uh, work before and now it doesn't work. I can't remember the name of it. It's on here, I forgot the name of the uh, actual front end. But apparently I had a bad EEPROM flash and the problem that it caused and it had me scratching my head was it was working a few weeks ago. And so what caused that was a bad EEPROM flash. And I had to reflash it again, and apparently it worked. It allowed me to boot into the other front end. And then eventually we started uh, testing them, or at least I started testing different USB drives to find out what was capable. And I think this all came out around the same time as the Nespy case, which caused a huge issue. So many different problems and concerns. And so uh, pretty much, uh, with the EEPROM updates. I don't know how many EEPROM updates there are out there right now, but in some cases, some EEPROM updates that are out here on the market or in the community can cause your Pi to run slower. Some of them will cause a, uh, your Pi to run faster, and some of them will prevent you from booting altogether. And then, of course, there are some instances where it will cause your Pi to crash or possibly fail, which if you're gonna EEPROM update your Raspberry Pi, it's highly suggested that you do it at your own risk. On top of all the EEPROM updates out there, we know that there's a Pi 4, one gigabyte model, a two gigabyte model, a four, a eight, and then now we have the Pi 400. With all of those different Pi devices and all of the different EEPROM updates, and now you factor in the number of drives that are out there, it's almost humanly impossible to troubleshoot or help someone or assist what's going on with their RetroPie build or their image because of all the different variables out there. So I wanna show you guys something really quick. 
And of course, this is the first disk drive that I made Pistolero on, so on Supreme Ultra. And on to my left, I'm gonna pull it up here because I want you guys to see it. This is the command boot for Supreme Ultra. Uh, some of these codes here are already embedded for you to help your drives or a number of drives boot successfully uh, with either Supreme Ultra or some of the other uh, RetroPie devices out there. So I had this same one that I've never had a problem with on either Pi 4, uh, the Pi 400, or the Pi uh, 8 gigabyte model, or the Pi 4. Loaded this up into the Nespy case, and it wouldn't boot. Wouldn't boot. And come to find out, it was actually this little command line right here. I had to delete it in order to get it to boot. With all of these different combinations and different drives, I know originally I talked to some other people in the community and they wanted to make a specified list of all the drives out there and all the possible boot configurations. And personally, I said that would be very difficult to do. There's too many different combinations out there and we would have to know every possible drive on the market and every possible variation in size to figure out what's what, which is reason why I typically only recommend for most of my subscribers and everybody who follow me, try to use a Samsung if you can, because out of all the disk drives that, that, that I've tested, whether they've been flash drives or uh, SSDs, those have had the best success rate to work across a number of different devices and different, uh, different flash drives. So another situation is, I have a PNY dri uh, drive, which is like this. I have a one, uh, 128 gigabyte PNY, not this particular one, but I have a hundred that's basically like this, a flash drive, 128 gigabyte PNY. And then for the same type of PNY made by the same company, a 256 gigabyte PNY. And do you know the one that was 128 gigabytes made by the same company, but a different file size or a different storage size wouldn't boot on some Pi devices. So you take all the different file sizes out there in terms of storage sizes, I'm sorry. Take all the different storages that are out there across all the different number of companies and you start to realize how difficult it is for us to really troubleshoot why your Pi isn't booting, why your image is running faster, why it's probably running slower and trying to find out all the different combinations and all the different variables out there. Um, I, there was one particular guy I know, uh, I was talking to him on the Discord, and he said, I think it was late December, he downloaded the latest EEPROM update, and that prevented him from using Wolfenos's one terabyte Retromania image. So he had to download or downgrade his EEPROM update in order to get it to work. Same image, same build, Supreme Ultra, and because of that EEPROM update, it calls him not to boot. So that's why a lot of times in the forums or in the groups when someone's saying, hey, something doesn't work, it could be your EEPROM update for the most part, or it could be your drive, and because of all of the different uh, variations with different drives and eight, uh, hard drives, not that, you know, non SSDs. There's too many combinations out there, file sizes, uh, uh, file sizes, different companies. There could be a company that pops up tomorrow with a different file size and a combination with the EE problem update. So you may be thinking that there's four different devices out there and there's four different devices to troubleshoot where in, in actuality, you take four different devices scattered across a number of EEPROM updates, scattered across a number of different companies making different storage devices. And we're not talking about four or five devices. We're now talking about several hundred different capabilities and possibilities that you may run into. And so that's what's going on in the community right now in terms of EEPROM updates and being able to troubleshoot 
And then, of course, people blaming image makers or builders say, hey, I can't boot or something can't. You know, this isn't the days of when the RetroPie, the Pi 4 first came out or the Raspberry Pi 3 or the 3B Plus where, hey, you need a better driver or whatnot. So, again, from my personal perspective, this is why I've spent so much time saying, hey, get a Samsung or, hey, get a SanDisk Ultra or uh, Extreme. Um, I know those aren't flash drives, but I'm just using those as an example. Um, uh, I do know PNY, they make another, uh, some good flash drives as well, as well as, uh, there's a, several other companies out there I've tested and they work is, you know, good as well too. But just wanted to give you guys that quick information because it is a very serious topic as what's going on with EE problem updates. And some of you have asked me for that EE problem update, uh, tool that I used several months ago. Uh, that is the only one that I've used because it has worked for me. I highly suggest that you stay with what works. But uh, with that being said, there are so many different other combinations and stuff coming on or coming out now uh, is more or less you have to troubleshoot it on a case by case basis. And there's really not anything out there cut in stone. So um, I'm not sure why the Raspberry Pi Foundation uh, if that is them, I can't remember who's releasing all these EEPROM updates, but if it is them, why, you know, it's really caused a problem because it's created all of these different variables for people to figure out. And so just wanted to go ahead and make mention of that for everyone. Um, I've been using the EEPROM update and the Pi 4, a gigabyte model since they first came out. I know a lot of you are still looking for a Pi 4, a gigabyte model capable images. And so uh, that is why, where you won't see a lot of images. And then, of course, in regards to that, in order to make a image or older image uh, capable to run on the Pi 400 or actually the Pi 4, a gigabyte model, uh, not only does the EEPROM update have to be done, but the image also has to be updated as well. Somebody said, oh, all you got to do is update the EEPROM update and you're good. No, the image like Supreme Beta 2 or Supreme Beta 4, all those have to be updated. Now, if you guys currently go online and you are looking for a uh, Pi 4 8 gigabyte model um, or image or base to use, uh, you could either use Supreme Pro V2. Um, I do know, I think the Arcade Punks uh, link does have the latest uh, link on there because I think somebody switched it or whatever the case might be. But that one is capable of running on uh, the Pi 4 8 gigabyte model as well as Supreme Ultra. In fact, uh, that was the first image that was capable of running on the 8 gigabyte model. Um, really wasn't wide known. I mean, I had it. And I think it was kind of kept on the download for a, for a long time. But you can manually upgrade some of the other images to work on the Pi 4 8 gigabyte model. And then, of course, if you are running 4.7.1, it will or should work. <laughs> I can't vouch for everybody's image. But if it's running RetroPie 4.7.1, then it should work on the Pi uh, 400. So hope you guys found this information helpful to clear up a lot of things. Because I see these questions day in and day out like, hey, I can't boot or this is going on on my image. And honestly, I wish I could tell you because. Oh, and then, of course, too the, the Nest P case, the Nest P4, uh, uh, case has really, as I've said before in a previous video, has really hindered the community in terms of boot configurations, because out of everything that I just mentioned, Please keep in mind that now the Nespy case has created a, another separate variable because certain drives won't boot directly on that drive uh, on that device because of boot configuration codes that are missing. So as you see here, some of these are some of the boot configuration codes that are needed to have specific drives boot just on the Nespy case. And this is not something the company provided, uh, the manufacturer of the Nespy case. This is something the community has provided. So in some cases, some people have said, hey, can you leave it off? Or, you know, if you're going to put it on, I mean, so, you know, you can't really win for losing in this type of scenario where you're trying to be helpful. And there's so many different configurations. I'm sure you guys get the point, but I just wanted to go ahead and put out this FYI 
or notice for the community because it has been a problem. It has been a big issue as to why you're not able to boot, why you may have different performance issues. You may say, well, hey, my image is running this particular way. But again, please keep that in mind. I know a lot of you don't want to go through the problem of testing different EEPROM updates to see what works best with your device. But just wanted to put out that FYI out there. This is uh, Keel Dyken. Hope you found this video informative. Please consider liking or subscribing or sharing. I'll be back more soon with the, uh, more information, but make sure you please hit that notification bell. I know YouTube has not been friendly in that matter of notifying my current subscribers, but this information is very important to understanding your RetroPie experience, and I'll keep you updated. Kill Dyke and signing out. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.